on today's episode. So I've been thinking recently about doing some more basic uh, projects. Uh, no doubt there are people out there just starting out, um, getting interested in electronics. Uh, not necessarily youngsters, but anybody that's uh, that's interested in the, in in the hobby, and they may be daunted by some of the projects that uh, that I've done, which are <laughs> fairly uh, fairly advanced. So I thought I'd do some more uh, down to down to basics type uh, stuff. I've already built an oscilloscope and uh, and a power supply, so you can get links to those videos uh, down in in the description. And uh, in this video, I thought we'd make. Uh, make a multimeter. Uh, the basic uh, requirement of any uh, any aspiring uh, electronics enthusiast. Now why? Why build one when I can go and get this one off the shelf in the Chinese shop for about the same price as I, I paid for the kit? Well um, even after some uh, getting on for 50 years in this in this game always learn something uh, it doesn't matter what you what you build from these little kits. Um, it's always uh, there's always something. So the the challenge with this kit is that there are no instructions. You get a, a handy circuit diagram and a, a bag of bits and some resistors. Um, but how do we put the thing together and and will it work? Let's get into it and um, see what challenges it provides. So with most kit builds it's usually advisable to start with the kind of lowest profile components first um, which would normally be the resistors. Now uh, there are obviously indications on the on the circuit board of to the the values and uh, the 0.5 percent the close tolerance components uh, are obviously going to be on the on the switching mechanism for doing the actual uh, measurements and the other components as as needed now uh, they've all been identified with um, with the values and the values don't sort of cross over between the half percent so uh, it is going to be reasonably straightforward so I'll get those built onto the board and uh, shan't bore you with my with my soldering so I've encountered the first challenge. Uh, having briefly glanced at them, I thought all the values were, were different, but in fact there are two 900 ohm resistors. One is R5 and one is R27. Now the difference is that R5 is only 0.5% tolerance and R27 is 0.15. Now there's no way of knowing from the circuit board itself uh, this 900R here I've already installed uh, because I discovered on the circuit diagram if we refer to that we can see that R27 is this 900 ohms here this is the high tolerance one and it's in conjunction with R28, 20K and the variable resistor so if we look on the circuit board uh, the location for the variable resistor is here and here's our, our 20k so this 900 ohms here is the high tolerance one and uh, for the avoidance of doubt as I say um, always handy to have one of these uh, testers uh, these just didn't exist uh, when I was a lad and we can see there that this is 899 ohms so that's the high tolerance one for 900 so let's get that installed so I've finished the installation of the resistors and that was pretty straightforward I just explained the one uh, anomaly with the 900 ohm resistor and folks starting out may not appreciate that the piece of wire that's in the in the kit is actually a resistor as well uh, we have on there uh, try and focus 0 0.01 ohms. Now that is a, a current shunt uh, for measuring the the ampage. So uh, we've got everything on there. I've opened the other bag of of goodies, and what do we have? We've got a little uh, socket for testing transistors, so that should be fun. We have a fuse for for safety and the, the associated little little clips that go with that. We have a bunch of uh, little copper 
contacts, which I guess uh, go underneath the, the rotary handle to uh, select the different ranges. We've got a bunch of screws. We have terminals to be soldered on. We've got some springs. Those, I guess, are for the battery. And then we have two very tiny springs and two ball bearings. Uh, we'll come on to that uh, later. So we have some capacitors to put in and there's the LCD screen and underneath it this pink rubbery thing is what's known as an elastomer. Now that has carbon contacts that go through and connects it to the to the circuit board. Now with the capacitors there's nothing particularly uh, unusual about these uh, but once again uh, if you're starting out, I really advise getting one of these so we can see that's a 96 picofarads, so 100 picofarads. We've got some 100 nanofarads and some 200 nanofarads, so nothing too exotic there. Well, let's get those installed and one variable resistor. So there's a small anomaly with the capacitors as well. When I was fitting them on the board, I was looking for 104s and they were easy to find. And then the other two capacitors that were, are supplied uh, are 200 nanofarad. And on the board it's marked 154, so it's 150, and also 150 here. And that's uh, true on the circuit diagram. It says 150 for this capacitor here and for the other one over there. Now, with the handy tester, both of these measure a little bit low anyway, 182 nanofarads, so I guess that must be within tolerance for the for the circuit, so we'll put them in and hope for the best. So, with all the capacitors fitted, it's now time to fit the, uh, the little socket for testing transistors on. But, um, which way around does it go? And where does it go? I mean, obviously it goes here, but there's no there's no marking on the on on the on the circuit board, so it can go in anyway. Now the trick here is that we know that this side, with the contacts on for the for the switch, is going to be sort of uppermost. So clearly, this has to go in this side. But uh, once again, which way round does it go? Well, if we notice on the on the case, there is a little little cut out and on the unit itself there is a little part that lines up with it so if we put that into into there and then offer up our circuit board like so we can now see exactly how to solder it up so when it comes to soldering the terminal connections for the for the probes and for the fuse, um, make sure that you've got a, a soldering iron of uh, sufficient uh, capacity, sufficient wattage. Now, when I was a boy, I was I was given this. I think I was probably 12 at the time. Got it as a as a birthday present. It's a lovely little Antex iron. So it's now pushing huh, 48. Uh, but it's only 15 watts, and for this job, I think it would it would really struggle. So, what I'm using today is my almost equally vintage and venerable uh, Weller, which is a, a 40 40 watt iron. So, this has uh, no problems at all with dealing with the extra heat required for the fuses and the connections. So we're nearly ready for the final assembly, just a few things to do. We need to take the backing off here and stick the, the decal down. And this is pretty much ready to go. We've got the LCD and the elastomer. Uh, one of the other little tricky jobs is, um, if you remember, we have these little uh, beryllium copper contacts that um, obviously the switch between the different ranges. Now it, uh, it's not possibly immediately obvious how these fit but they certainly they just uh, simply hook over these little uh, plastic pieces in, in, in the middle so we take those one at a time and just gently clip those in. 
So just before final assembly now, I just want to make sure that these contacts are clean because obviously with uh, handling it and, uh, and soldering, etc., you might get grease on these contacts. So uh, possibly especially important for these contacts up here where the elastomer needs to join with the connector for the LCD. So that's nice and clean. Now, the other part of the puzzle is we, you may have been wondering what these little springs and the little ball bearings are about. Well, this is the mechanism that locks the dial in place. These little guys. So these are like the detents as you move the switch around that puts the contacts in the right place. So if we flip this guy over and carefully assemble that in, just press it down from the back for the moment, you get the, uh, the classic uh, noise of the, uh, of the contacts. So that's all in place. Now we have to put the LCD in. So at the bottom there, I'm not sure if we can focus on that, but um, these are the contacts along the, along the bottom for the LCD. So that simply sits in there. And then the elastomer, there's a little raised piece that indicates where the elastomer should, should go. That's in place there now. And finally, the main circuit board. And that clicks in place. And all looks good. Now, there were six screws supplied. There's four shorter ones and two long ones. The two long ones are to hold the back on once it's together. So, these little guys are just to hold the board in. So with the board held firmly in place now, um, this is the negative side of the battery and the positive, so that lines up with the negative there. And let's see, let's uh, first uh, switch on. So AC volts, DC volts, and on the ohms range it shows the over, over range, so excellent. So let's get the thing back, well, completely assembled and uh, we'll give it some tests. So using my Fluke as a, as a reference, we've got uh, just about 15 volts on uh, on a power supply so if we switch this guy on to dc volts we can see we're getting around 14.9 on that range 14.79 so it's it's 14.8 uh, it's reading a little bit low and that's the reason why we have this adjustable um, pot on on the back here so if we get our adjusting tool, it's a very fine adjustment. So as near as damn it, um, the two meters are now in uh, in agreement. So um, I think that's a wrap. Um, it's going to be a nice little little meter. I think it will be a gift for uh, for somebody that's uh, just starting out. And um, I hope they have many years of good service out of it.